Stephen Fry said a true thing, poorly expressed, is a lie. Now, art and design is about expression, right? Have you ever watched a visually striking movie where the imagery stayed in your head for weeks? Or played a really engaging video game that you and your friends have talked about for years to come? Well, chances are it had a really good story, or it just featured timeless gameplay. So what does this actually have to do with us artists? Well, it's highly probable that these entertainment properties also had really good art direction and a strong use of form language. After all, it's an inherent aspect of good design. Let's take a step back for a moment. Humans have existed in some form for thousands of years, way before any history was even recorded. So imagine in the entire scope of the human timeline, all our advances haven't really been until recently, and more specifically in the last 3,000 years or so. Well, a professor of linguistics at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Noam Chomsky, believes that it is assumed by paleontologists that uh, the emergence of language is what really evolved the human race. Language provides the mechanisms for higher levels of creativity, and so the development really is a means of communication that boosted the creativity and cognitive capacity of the human sensibility. And then a question emerges for what kind of system is it? On the surface, languages look very different, yet if someone walked into the room, my office, you know, speaking Swahili, I won't understand a thing, but I would recognize that it is a language. It's recognizable because at the core of language is a set of principles that determine an infinite array of possible structured expressions, which have definite meanings. Or to put it more simply, a system of rules. And then we have form. From a visual perspective, forms are the 3D equivalents of shapes and are measured by their width, height, and depth. Now there are two distinctly different types of form, geometric and organic. Geometric forms appear more man-made. They really feel solid, whether simple or complex. There appears to be more control and order with them. On the other hand, we have organic. Generally, that feels softer and more natural and can, and can also be more simple or complex. So, form plus language equals what? Maybe it's rules for shapes. Maybe it's a system for arranging matter together. And I'd say yes and yes, but basically it's a repertoire of these forms based on a vocabulary of, of components. And I know that sounds a little confusing, so let's, let's look at some examples and go over some demonstrations. Some of you may remember that really cool Tom Cruise movie, Oblivion. What was even cooler was that ship that he flew around for half the movie, and it was designed by Daniel Simon. The design of the ship was widely popular and successful for a number of reasons. The form language used here clearly communicated the design's intention. Just by glancing at it, we can understand its purpose, and for others, it may even evoke an emotional response. So let's break this design down a little bit further. Good form language really does create a meaningful experience by appealing to the visual sense of the viewer. It looks cool, it functions, and it's entertaining. The bubble ship, as it's commonly referred to, is a combination of the Bell 47 helicopter and a dragonfly. So when breaking down the forms of the two inspiration sources, it becomes a bit more clear what sort of shapes went into the creation of it. Observing these key forms, then putting those observations into words of visual substance, lays out the foundation of the language used in the ship's creation. This first list consists of visually expressive words. So it's organic. The shapes are dynamic. They aim to be unique. They want to convey the feeling of lightness. They are absolutely elegant. And yet it has to look aggressive enough to feel slightly dangerous. While this second list contains emotional drivers that embodies the language. It's supposed to feel strong, energetic, yet serious and cool. Now combine this form language with the functionality of the design that it requires and you'll have a solid design method. Now for another example. Remember when I said it's recognizable because at its core the language is a set of principles that determine an infinite array of possible structured expressions? 
I feel a good example of this was back on my Soviet dam project. Basically, to create this in a timely manner and to utilize a uniform design language, I looked to the Brutalist architecture for inspiration. I created six different assets. These assets were then designed to be entirely modular. That is, I could arrange them indefinitely to keep creating designs using the same forms. All I need to do is change the arrangement of these forms. I can scale them. I can rotate them. I can change their orientation as well as flip their axis. The sky's the limit. Therefore, the only reason to stop is if I've met my design needs or if I just run out of inspiration and ideas. All right, let's look at one more example uh, using some characters I did. And I want to break this down a little more simply in regards to form and talk more specifically about the shape language since I kind of feel like they go hand in hand. Now, so this is the same character using the exact same shape language. And this just goes to show you that w when you understand the fundamentals, you can warp, alter, and change the proportions of that shape or form language to create different styles. So here on the left, we have something kind of more realistically proportioned. Here's something slightly exaggerated to represent uh, something more of a comic book. And on the right, we have a style that represents something you might find in an animated film where the exaggerations are extremely played up. So what form or shape language are we looking at here? Well, for me, let's, let's start off with the square. Uh, and how can we arrange the proportions of this square? This is something very equal, very, very normal, right? I would say that, that it's close to actually being found if we break down this design, something like this, right? It's very equally proportioned. Whereas if we look at the, the, the second design here, what, what kind of simplified shapes are we looking at here to break apart this character? It'd be something like this. And then lastly, it would be the inverse of this. And you can invert them and play with the proportions of each, right? We have something that would be found kind of like so. So this is the most simplistic abstract representation of these forms. Now, if we want to add some complexity to this and introduce the tri uh, triangles as a form language, since this is a very dynamic and sometimes aggressive character, because he is a sky pirate after all, I thought using a combination you know, of these two would be ideal. So now I'm going to try to combine these shapes, you know, triangles, uh, more aggressive sharp edges to make a more sophisticated language. So I'll start out by just lowering the opacity on this and, and the character so we can, so things don't get too convoluted, right? So let's go over that. So I might have a little bit of a, a, a triangle shape for the head, maybe get in some dynamic you know, shoulder lines, maybe kind of push them in a little bit more. Likewise, we could also go out since his pants are, you know, billowing out you know, and his legs. It's still just a very simple, uh, you know, a simple representation of what uh, I'm doing here. Very abstract, but it's also kind of fine that way. Because I could eventually just refine and refine the shapes to really start figuring out, you know, the language, you know, of these characters. So I'm going to try to keep these, you know, very simple. And as you can see, the further we go down the line, the more exaggerated things are becoming. Right, we have that here, we have his little head <laughs> sticking out over like there. And we're gonna pinch him in at the waist and give him these little short, kind of squawky looking legs. And of course, an even bigger, thicker weapon. So again, a very abstract representation. Of course, right here we have the triangles and the orange, which was originally designed by the square. So this is the language design of this character. Now, all it would take from here is to basically give it all a once over. Now this is where I'd start really looking for these proportions in regards to these shapes on these characters. So, you know, we have, we have the forearms, we have little nodes for all these appendages, and we can get a little bit more specific, you know, with each, you know, and every one of them. All right, so coming off the last example, I would then want to combine these shapes with the role or purpose of the character, right? So being a sky pirate, I want to give him a cool duster, a harpoon, and of course a mechanical arm. Anyways, for my closing thoughts here, remember the language we speak or use determines how we think and how we see everything. There is no idea without expression and no content without form. No matter how great of an idea you have, it doesn't truly exist until you can communicate it properly. So again, clarity is everything in design. 
Be in command of your ideas. Start with simple building blocks, form a solid foundation, then go from there. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, leave them below in the comments. This video itself was inspired by a student's question that I had, so I'd love to create more of these. They are exhausting to make, this heavily edited format, but hopefully in the future we will see more, so be sure to subscribe. Take care. Thanks for watching, particularly if you made it to the end here. If you'd like to support the channel, please like, share, and comment. You can find me on Facebook, ArtStation, and Instagram. Now, I share different content on each platform, so feel free to stalk me across the web to join the Brush Sauce community as linked below. We do hangouts, have a Discord channel, host challenges, and support each other in artistic growth. Finally, if you'd like to inquire about my one-on-one -on -one mentorship program, head over to tyleredlinart.com, click on the mentorship tab for information, and shoot me an email. Also, I run two courses at the Computer Graphics Master Academy. Feel free to check out those as well. Take care.